Hello everybody, my name is Warner Chavez, SQL Server Certified Master with uh, SQLTurbo.com and today I'm going to go over my first demo for in-memory OLTP and that is the dials of in-memory and durability. So, let's jump right in. So first of all, we're going to go over uh, the setup of the demo. As you guys can see, this is a Windows Server 2012 virtual machine. I have run it on my laptop and what I did was basically create a custom AdventureWorks 2008 R2 database. This is the add file group it contains memory optimized data that is required to add a file group to a database before you add in memory objects. After you have the file group you just simply need to add a container for the in memory data files. In this case I just created a folder called AdventureWorks Hegaton to hold those files. Now what we're going to do in this demo is we're going to create a comparison of performance of a classic table with uh, many of the variations of in-memory that are available in SQL Server 2014. So the classic table is this one. It's uh, called Personite Entity and it's a very uh, simple normal table that you will find on OLTP database. It has an entity ID, a person type, title, first name, middle name, last name, suffix, and a modified date. As you guys can see it has a uh, primary key clustered 1-1 one, one identity on the ID. So like I said a very classic setup that uh, most people will find uh, many times inside their OLTP databases. Now here's the in-memory durable table. Now remember in-memory can be durable or uh, schema only so we're gonna compare both. In this first one this is a completely durable table and as you guys can see it has the exact same schema as the previous classic table. The only difference is that this one is with memory optimized on and like I said durability is schema and data. Now let's check out the non-durable table. It's exactly the same setup. The only difference is durability is schema only. So remember this will not do any I.O. to the transaction lock. It's purely schema only. If SQL Server restarts all the data is gone. And uh, for the comparisons as well, I'm going to use one natively compiled store procedure. It simply does an insert of a person. That's why I call it insert person a native. And as you guys can see, it's very simple. It's just one insert statement uh, taking the parameters from the store procedure. And I have yet another natively compiled store procedure. Uh, this one is going to be with delayed commit. So uh, the actual option is right here you just have to specify the delay durability equals on. Now for those of you that are not familiar with this option, it's new in SQL 2014 and basically what it does is that it does asynchronous commits to the transaction log. Okay. And finally the last store procedure we're going to use for the comparison is this one and this one is insert person native but this time it's on the non-durable table. So we have uh, three flavors of natively compiled procedures. The one that's just the normal insert, the one that does the delayed commit, and the one that is completely non-durable. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out all the wait stats. Then we're going to run a pre-made set of uh, tests that I already have created with uh, SQL Stress. Great tool by Adam Mechanic. And what I'm going to do is each time I run it, I'm going to record the time it took on this Excel spreadsheet. And then we're going to see the difference between all the different uh, run times for each one of the variations of, um, of the store procedures and the inserts. So let's start with this one. This is an insert into person dot person entity. So this is the classic table, just like any other SQL Server version before uh, in memory OLTP. So let's just run that. And the number I'm going to be using is this one right here, the client seconds per iteration. And that's an average. So we'll wait for it to run. Now, as you guys can see, this is the number that we're interested in. So I'm going to record it on the Excel. So that's 0 0.0497. Okay, so the next comparison we're going to do is with in-memory, but using interop. Now remember, in-memory doesn't have to be 
uh, accessed only with natively compiled stir procedures. That's one of the really cool things about it. You can also just use normal T-SQL and let uh, SQL servers interop layer uh, figure out how to communicate between uh, the normal T-SQL and the in-memory OLTP table. So you just run that now. Okay, so that's done. And again, the number that we are interested in is this one right here. It's 0 0.0205. So I'm going to record it here. Now we can go and check the weight stats of the server so far. As so you can see, there's going to be latch latch ex, write lock, page latch. So what happens when we clear the whole thing? So let's clear it up. Let's run the next in memory uh, setup. So that will be in memory native. Right? Okay, so let's close this one. Let's go over with in memory native. Let's just run that. And it's done now. And again, let's zoom in and uh, check out the value that we're interested in 0 0.0187. So 0 0.0187. And let's take a look at the weight stats profile. Um, so remember, this is the last time, and this was when I ran the classic one and then I ran the in memory one. So this is what a mixed workload would look like. You know, we have some latch, latch ex, write log, obviously, because we're writing new data, and some page latch uh, weights as well. Uh, but if I rerun this now, I'll see there was uh, basically uh, just mostly write log weights. That's uh, all the other page latch uh, weights have basically disappeared at this point. And there was a small exclusive lock. I believe this is because of the compilation of uh, the natively compiled store procedure. And that's it. And um, that's it. So let's try the next one. The next variation would be uh, in memory and delayed durable. So this is this one right here. So we're running, remember, on delayed commit. I'm just going to do a zoom right here so you guys can see uh, right here. This is the delayed commit version. And let's just give it a run. And that's it. And let's go and check out the value we want. In this case, it's 0 0.0060. Just going to put it right here. 0 0.0060. And finally, we're just going to run the in memory with uh, a schema only. So this is a completely non durable table. And this is a native compiled store procedure as well. So let's just run that. get 0 0.0067 perfect so let's put that in here 0 0.0067 and that's it so let's take a look at uh, the comparisons of how the different in-memory flavors did against the classic here on my laptop uh, just for reference my laptop is right now on this VM I have exposed four cores I am running an i7 uh, 4710. Uh, I have also an SSD. This uh, virtual machine right now is on the SSD. And this particular VM has, let me see how much RAM. Let's 
see so it's 3.5 gigs of RAM obviously everything that's in memory has to fit in memory um, so let's uh, let's see so basically just by turning in memory on uh, the particular insert throughput went up by 2.4 so this that's a pretty decent uh, uh, change considering how easy it is to just say you know with memory optimized on and that's it right we're using the interop layer here so second one now we moved to natively compiled so as you guys can see just because it's just an insert statement it's very simple the difference is very very small we got a little bit of a gain here 2.4 now we went up to 2.6 but if we were dealing with more complex store procedures you would definitely want to do an analysis like this and make sure that the increase in the just by going to native is worth um, the trouble of actually dealing with all the limitations in native compilation right um, now if you guys can see the bigger jump here is on my um, laptop at least is when we change to uh, procedures that stress the transaction log less right so the late durability is gonna basically accumulate all the changes until it fills up the log buffer in memory and then it's gonna flush it into the transaction log so the IO pattern is a lot faster plus like I said my laptop it has that transaction log on SSD so um, the interesting thing here is that basically there's a very very small difference between 7.4 schema only and 8.2 delayed durable so in this case it really it doesn't even make that much sense uh, if if we had for example to decide between delayed durability or schema only you could just pick either one of the both of them they both seem to perform really well when the transaction log uh, the drive that holds the transaction log doesn't have a lot of contention if we were dealing with like an actual production workload and your transaction log drive was being used by let's say 20 other databases and it was a lot busier I would expect this would not look as close as it looks right here. In that case, I would expect that schema only, because it doesn't do any transaction log I/O at all, would probably be um, way more advantageous than delayed durability. But we can still see that there's a big difference between these and where we started here with the classic. Right at this point, we're talking about eight and seven more times throughput, and this is just on laptop hardware. Right? Imagine if it was on an actual production server that we're talking about you know 16 32 cores um, enterprise grade memory with memory speed and also uh, very likely very fast could be SSD storage for a transaction log and like actual enterprise grade SSD not just a laptop grade SSD um, okay so that was uh, that was the demo uh, I hope it gives a really good uh, uh, compare and contrast of all the different variations of in memory that are available right now let's do a recap so what we saw right now what's the use case well if you have locking issues and row versioning didn't significantly improve throughput so basically you tried snapshot isolation but the uh, the heavy load it puts on tempdb didn't help out so you, your throughput didn't go that higher well then you should try to go in memory because it removes all the locks and the latches uh, if you don't have locking but you still have latching and it's limiting your throughput so basically if you're already on snapshot isolation for example and then there's no locking for reading but there's still latching and you can actually see it on your top weight so you have those page latch and latch ex type of uh, weights then you know you might want to go in memory and that might make a big difference for your throughput as well uh, if you don't have locking or latching then I would say the only thing that might help you improve throughput in that case is native compilation just because it creates you know less CPU instructions per execution uh, number two if you have to ingest large amounts of data where there are big spikes of activity and low periods probably you want to mix in memory with classic so that you can receive the data in in memory and then just dump it later when you know the activity goes lower you can dump it into a classic table if you have high throughput data where it's okay if you lose some of it as long as most is there that's really the use case for delay durability and it mixes up really well with in memory and like I showed on the demo you get a really big spike on speed um, then if you have data that needs to be queried with the richness of the SQL but you don't need to keep everything restart so schema only data basically and we're talking about things like uh, for example we can have like caches where people can store uh, some type of session information or you can store like um, 
uh, for example in video games you could store like deathmatch information uh, and all that information it doesn't matter if the server just goes down because the users will just recreate the matches for example uh, you could use it for materialized views and memory as well um, if you have non-durable data like for example if you had a bunch of materialized views in memory uh, and you had a cluster with different availability groups and you want to scale those views out you can't use schema only uh, because schema only does not write to the transaction log all the other views in the other uh, servers will remain empty so you have to use delayed durability so just keep that in mind anyway so that was the use case uh, number one the dials of in memory and durability and stay tuned and we'll have uh, some other demos in the next few days thank you